Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, in various places on the internet. It just turned 2.20 p.m. according to a computer clock on Wednesday, April 12, 2017. This is my review of Ghost in the Shell. No, I didn't go see Ghost. It wasn't a re-release of Ghost. It wasn't Ghostbusters. It was Ghost in the Shell. So, I've seen the original movie... I've seen the first CISO standalone complex. I've seen the second movie. Um, I've seen the first three episodes of Arise. And I've seen the new movie, which is a sequel to Arise. Um, haven't seen the second CISO standalone complex, also called Second Gig. I still have to see episodes 4 and 5 of Arise, and I got to see um, Solid State Society, which was the movie in the um, standalone complex universe that kind of wraps everything up. Um, anyway, I haven't read the original manga, but I'm familiar enough with the property. So I enjoyed the movie overall. They changed the major's name to some English name, but she used to be Motoko Kusanagi. Um, she uh, she was a rebellious girl that ran away from home, went into the lawless zone or whatever, and she got kidnapped along with some other people and got experimented on. So she's got a new cyborg body. She got she gets put in section nine. So a lot, there's a lot of homages to the original movie, and I think even the standalone complex. I think the thing with the geisha attacks and stuff like that. I think that was like episode one or two of standalone complex. Something similar happened. Um. So, yeah, I mean, overall, um, it was an enjoyable movie, heavy on the CGI, of course, um, they don't really say where it takes place, but if you think about it, neither does the original movie. It's, it's a lot of people say Hong Kong, but it's supposed to be Newport City or something, which is like... Okay, Tokyo got destroyed in, like, World War Three. The whole island or whatever got destroyed. But another island was reclaimed or something. And they built a new city on it. They, I forget what the official name of it is called, but it's also called Newport City. And that's what it's supposed to be. Um, and temporarily was the new capital of Japan before another city took over as the capital. But... This is where Section 9's headquarters is located. And speaking of, it irritated me that they called that he said, you know, Section 9 headquarters Department of Defense. That is so American. It's supposed to be like Ministry of Defense. Um, but. Okay, uh, from what I heard, apparently the Japanese dub, they got the original voice actors for Matoko Bato and um, Kogusa, or to yeah, Togusa, to uh, reprise their roles, which is neat. <laughs> That's very nice. Uh, because actually in Japan now, the original voice actor for Matoko no longer voices Matoko, except for this new movie. Uh, instead, they got... Um, the woman that had voiced Matoko as a child in the original movie and in Standalone Complex. She's now the new voice of adult Matoko, which is kind of fitting. And in the new movie, the blue, the, you know, the new anime movie, uh, in the English dub, well, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn from Standalone Complex no longer voices Matoko either. Instead, they, they gave her a different role. She voices someone else. She just doesn't voice Matoko. And also, in um, 
they made these compilation movies from standalone complex. The first season is called the Puppet Master, or the first movie is called the Puppet Master. The second was called the Individual Elephant. I've seen the first one, but not the second one yet. This is the only version of standalone complex that has been released in high definition on Blu-ray, uh, because the show hasn't been. They basically string together most of the Puppet Master episodes as well as some additional connecting material to turn it into a long movie. Like, you know, two hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> um, so you get to watch a whole season in one movie. And someone else voices Motoko in the English dub in that movie as well. <coughs> but I'm getting off topic. So how's the new movie with Scarlett Johansson? It's okay. Yeah, her performance is a little wooden, as if she was told, well, your character's, you know, you got a human brain and a body of a robot, and she's like, robot, got it. And that's what she went with. Yeah, she's kind of flat. Um, everyone else around her is pretty good. Um, in fact, the guy plays our mocking her. Don't remember his name at the moment. He is a badass. Jeez, Armaki. It's like, man. <laughs> You'll know what I'm talking about if you see the movie. Um, one thing that's really weird, though. Armaki is like the only guy in this movie that's speaking Japanese. Everyone else speaks English, even in conversations with him, and he's speaking Japanese. It's like they, they're each... They're speaking different languages, but they're having conversations with each other, and it, it doesn't make sense unless you figure both characters know both languages, but then why? Is it Matoko speaking Japanese? Why is it Aramaki speaking English? I don't know. Oh, they put the uh, Japanese choir song in the closing credits. Um... The one that was at the beginning of the move of the original movie. It might be a different version. I don't know, but yeah. Um, no tachikomas. Uh, yeah, I th there weren't any tachikomas or logicomas or anything like that. It was kind of disappointing. I wanted to hear major, major, but you know <laughs> what you gonna do. Um, What else? They, uh, they changed the outcome, like, it's, this isn't a straight adaptation of the first movie or anything, they're taking stuff from all over the place, but one thing that I noticed is, Motoko doesn't merge with the other guy, even though he offers it to her, unlike in the first movie where she does merge with the puppet master, here she wants to retain her individuality. That is a major change. The first thing that I thought was, that's different. But, uh, yeah, it's very much more Western-oriented than Eastern-oriented. Because East, in that culture, it's more about the group instead of the individual. Here in the West, especially in America, it's all about the individual. It's about me, me, me. I am important. And... In the original movie, they post they post the idea that you know what if you could be more as a group, and what if you're not all that as an individual. So, but they changed it, and I I get why they changed it, but I wish they hadn't. <laughs> um. The movie wasn't doing well at the box office. Well, internationally, it's doing okay. But I want to see what the current total is. Just to see where it's at. I think it debuted in, like, fifth place or something like that. Ah, oh, jeez. Hang on.
Okay, let's see. That says Beauty and the Beast is closing in on one billion worldwide. That's that's cool. Um Why isn't the internet moving? Stupid thing. Did the internet drop? Okay, I fixed that. I think it was a problem with the uh, adapter. Um, anyway, let's look up the Ghost in the Shell figures. Number five again from Monday. Uh, let's see. It's no longer making a million plus on the weekdays, but it still is on the weekends. I don't know. Okay, worldwide it has made its money back. Mostly, <laughs> mostly foreign. The budget was $110 million, foreign takes like 96.9, domestic takes 32.2 for a total of, you know, 129.1. So, it's made its money back. Now, that doesn't mean in Hollywood accounting that it's made its money back. But, you gotta figure that will eventually. Um... They haven't dropped any of the theaters yet, so that's a good sign. They probably will this coming Friday, but I figure it's still going to make some more money, and it hasn't dropped in places at the box office. It's still where it was when it debuted, so it's not a hit, but at the same time, you can't call it a complete flop. So, it is what it is. Uh, I hope there's another one. It was enjoyable. I, I liked it. Um, I, it doesn't say when it takes place. I think the original takes place like 2029. Same here as Logan. <laughs> but, um, it's crazy. That's only 12 years from now. There's no way that we're going to get to that from here. <laughs> Um, uh, from what I, from what I've read, things are going more like genetic engineering and stuff like that, like, you know, with genetics instead of cyborg, um, computer augmentation, stuff like that. Um... But yeah, anyway, I enjoyed it, and the special effects are good, and the music's good, and most of the performances are good. So yeah, definitely go and see it. Um, 
It's 2.36 p.m. and that's it. Thanks for watching.